Hello guys, Crispy here, welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, I'm gonna be testing the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Super in 18 popular titles. Let's go over its specs first. So the 4070 Super got a really nice upgrade in CUDA core count compared to the RTX 4070. It now has 7,168 CUDA cores, and that's a 20% increase over the 5,888 CUDA cores found on the normal RTX 4070. Not only that, they also increased the clock speed slightly by about 3%, coming from 1920 MHz on the 4070 to 1980 MHz, and that's base clock by the way, on the 4070 Super. So we got an increase in CUDA core count and clock speed at the same time, and that translates into about 15% performance gains in gaming. Now to increase the CUDA core count as well as the clock speed, of course they had to sacrifice a little bit in terms of TDP, it consumes 220 watts compared to the 200 watts on the 4070. So it's a 10% increase in TDP for about 15% more performance, which is totally worth it in my opinion. And you know what's interesting? That 15% more performance that Nvidia says this gets over a 4070. It puts this on par with the 3080 Ti or 3090, and I think that's where the original 4070 should have landed when it released for 599. Now they actually reduced the recommended price for the RTX 4070. It's 50 bucks less expensive these days. This one comes in at that 599 mark, and I think this is probably more worth it. For 50 bucks, you're getting 20% more CUDA cores. I mean, also it's pretty interesting to see that the performance coming from a 4070 to a 4070 Super is greater than something like a 3060 Ti to a 4060 Ti. Like that's a full generation. This is just a little revision, you know. <laughs> Anyways, in terms of of memory we got the same 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM running on a 192 bit memory bus and that should be enough for its target resolution of 1440p. By the way in today's games I'm only going to test at 1440p with and without the LSS's and frame generations and stuff and tomorrow I'll have another test with an overclock version of the 4070 Super at 4k resolution so stay tuned in for that. Lastly we're pairing it today with a Ryzen 9 79 50x 3D with half of its cores disabled. We're only running the 3DV cache cores. 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 megahertz CL30 RAM and a 2 terabyte SSD for all of the games tested. Let's play some games now, shall we? Let's start with Cyberpunk 2077 with the Phantom Liberty DLC. We're playing at 1440p using the Ultra Settings preset. I just disabled these over here as well as the upscaling. That's the only difference from the preset itself. And we are playing in the Dogtown part of the map of the DLC. This is extremely intensive. It dips into the 50s, actually. I've seen it already. <laughs> Let's see. Yep, there we go. 59 right there. Compared to the 4070 Ti. Oh, boy. With the same settings, that GPU didn't really dip into the 50s, but it dropped to, like, 62 on the minimum. This was, like, 59. So not really far off of what the 4070 Ti can do, which is very impressive for the 4070 Super. Especially Especially given that it's a $600 GPU compared to the $800 of the TI variant. Now, since it does dip into... Oh my god, I'm so sorry, people. I am very, very sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, since it dips into the low 60s and high 50s at times, it's not gonna happen very often. Uh, it's only here, basically, in the base game. It's always gonna stay at 60+. plus. Um, I am gonna use some DLSS. And good news is, with DLSS set to quality at 1440p, this game looks and plays really, really well. Why is the car so small now? <laughs> I changed the camera angle there. Alright, start counting our FPS. Okay, here we go again. Now we're getting 90s and 80s very often, and over here, instead of dropping into the 60s and lower 60s, it's now well above, like, 80 frames all of the time. These guys are very annoying. Like, what the hell are they doing? after me. I'm benchmarking here! This is how I'd play this game. It looks super similar to native resolution, maybe slightly better because of the TAA implementation at native res in this game. It's not really that great. And DLSS upscales the image and applies some sharpening, so it ends up looking super similar to native res, if not slightly better because of that sharpening. If you don't care about ray tracing, this is a great experience right here. Now let's try it with some frame generation on top of it. Let's set this back 
back to quality right here. This is ultra settings with DLSS quality and frame generation now. Look at that VRAM utilization, it should be a little bit higher than it was before as well because frame generation uses a bit more VRAM. And now instead of getting 60 to 70 or 80 to 90, we're actually close to 140 frames per second with like 130s on the minimums. Probably like high 120s on the minimums, I guess. I would probably adjust the sharpening a little bit. Maybe use like 60% sharpening here because it's starting to look slightly soft, you know. But hey, can't complain about that experience. This is what NVIDIA likes to show you guys, like 140 FPS in Cyberpunk. It's not native, but... It's close enough. Now, what about ray tracing? I set it to the ray tracing ultra settings preset. I'm gonna use some DLSS super resolution as well on quality. Leave frame generation enabled because you should probably use it if you're using RT in this game. And I'm also gonna enable ray reconstruction here, which finally they allow you to use it without using path tracing at the same time, you know? I'm just gonna disable all of these right here so we have a cleaner image. And, wow, look at that. With ray tracing, we're getting 100-ish frames per second right here, which still feels really, really good in terms of input lag and so on. There's nothing to worry about. And yeah, it just feels very, very smooth. VRAM utilization is not maxed out either, even with ray tracing and frame generation on top of it. So the 12 gigs are enough, at least for now. It's, it's going up still. <laughs> <laughs> but you shouldn't really have a problem at this res. Here is Bob. Goodbye, Bob. <laughs> See you later in another game. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have the finals. We're playing this one at the 1440p resolution using DLAA, so it's still native res. Frame generation is disabled because it introduces input lag and this is a competitive shooter. You don't want that. <laughs> and we're utilizing the epic settings and the dynamic epic RTX global illumination. Now, it's not really that super high refresh rate experience that you'd like to have in a game like this, and you probably need to have it if you want to be super, super sweaty at it. I don't really care much about it, honestly. 100 FPS is completely fine by me. Also, zero stutters whatsoever, of course, to be expected. This game is very, very well optimized. And if you want to get way higher FPS, it's also possible to do so. Oh, what the? Whoa, 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 whoa! What is happening here? Wh who threw this crap? <laughs> My boy's dead over. There. Like, wh wh where is he going? He's dead. I don't understand. Oh, oh. Okay, wait a second. Uh, let's go. One down. Also, guys, expect more videos in these games that we're testing here today, or at least most of them. Uh, testing more resolutions and more settings, all right? Because I will do that as usual. <laughs> now, about the experience here in the finals, if you want to max this game out at 1440p, you definitely can. It's not going to be super high refresh rate of an experience, but, I mean, it's super damn playable, buttery smooth. I at least would enjoy this game a lot like this especially on like a 120 hertz monitor for example now it's the gorgeous red dead redemption 2 at 2560 by 1440 i mean i should probably stop saying that this entire video is going to be at 1440p and we're using the ultra settings preset i just turned this little slider all the way to the right disabled motion blur and look at this guys it is absolutely gorgeous as usual always great to come back here there's roach as well hello my friend how How's it going? And we're getting a good 100 FPS, which is nice for ultra settings. Also, guys, the GPU utilization is not completely maxed out. It's at 95% usage. I find it really weird, but I can't really figure out why that is in Red Dead Redemption 2. It only happens in this game. Anyways, we got Jack over here. Hello, buddy. Hello. How's it going, boy? I can see you. Oh, you're cute as always. Look at that. Oh, hello, uh, friends. <laughs> There he goes. There he goes. Yes. Go hunt him down, Jack. Let's go. You can do it. Oh, this is so interesting. He just stops, though. He doesn't proceed to attack. Hmm. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go to the Strawberry Town, which is one of the most intensive cities or little towns in this game, uh, because it has a river coming through it, and the water is very intensive in Red Dead Redemption 2, especially if you use the water physics close to maxed out. Around these forest areas, though, things are usually a little bit intensive as well, because vegetation is very intensive for GPUs, as usual, and uh, it's still well above 100 frames per second all of the time, like 95 1% low 
flows extremely smooth. Here we are, Strawberry Town, getting lower 100 still. It's not dropping. Very good results. Oh, yes. <laughs> I actually thought that we would drop it to the 90s much more often, but no, look at this. It's keeping up there, 100 plus FPS right now. Let's go into the water, Roach. Come on, come on, buddy. We can do this, we can do this. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go, not a problem. It's still well above 100. So, for a single-player game like this, this is honestly all you need. Now we're playing Call of Duty Warzone 3. It's not really Warzone 3, it's just the Modern Warfare 3 update, but they decided to call it Warzone only. I'm playing at 1440p native resolution, no upscaling, only sharpening is being utilized in the form of Fidelity FX CAS. This is disabled, but it only works in the gunsmith and firing range, not actually inside of the game itself, so it doesn't really matter. VRS is enabled and we're using the extreme settings. Uh, preset without depth of field because that looks terrible in this game actually and I got very good things to say about the performance in this particular title I recently tested the RTX 4070 in one of those separate videos testing a ton of settings and it was getting around these FPS that we're getting right now but at 1440p extreme with DLSS quality this is doing it at native resolution and it's actually slightly better at the same time so <laughs> yeah this is this is pretty Pretty good results indeed. Of course, if you get close to water, it will drop a little bit, as you can see, 130s there, 120s. If you shoot the water, it will drop even further into the 1-teens. But it's gonna stay a high refresh rate experience throughout the gameplay session here and throughout the entire map, which is very, very good. I'm being tracked. Are you serious? Why me? Why me? But yeah, this is definitely buttery smooth. Unfortunately, I'm using 60 hertz because of the capture card. But believe me, on a 144 hertz or 165 hertz 1440p monitor, it's gonna be an extremely good experience on extreme settings. I don't think anybody's gonna complain about this experience. 158 FPS average at native 1440p is super, super nice. Now it's Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, guys. This beautiful title by Ubisoft. And we're playing this at the 1440p resolution using ultra quality DLSS. You can't really set it to native, so I guess this might be like the LAA. <laughs> Biased scaling mode as well, which biases the image towards a 4K output. And we're using the ultra settings preset with no motion blur. And guys, this is very intensive in Indeed, it's getting 60s around here, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna get a little bit higher FPS, but this game is super, super intensive. So seeing 60s, it's not really all that bad. You can always enable a little bit of the LSS quality instead of ultra quality. Oh, 57, 56. Ooh, it's, it's dropping a lot, actually. Uh, it's still playable, of course, but mm, drops into the 50s is not something that you want on a $600 GPU. So you gotta utilize some DLSS on quality. Setting it to quality right here puts it at above 60 FPS uh, most of the time. Still dips here and there though. <laughs> but at least it's not dipping into the mid 50s anymore. Okay, only into the high 50s, like 58, 59. You could overclock the card slightly as well and achieve a little bit higher FPS. Or you could choose to just disable the LSS, play with FSR 3, frame generation enabled, ultra quality right here. This looks basically like native resolution, maybe slightly softer, <laughs> but I can't really tell much of a difference. And this is on a 42 inch monitor as well. The only thing that I can spot on the image that is not really that pretty using FSR 3's frame generation in this this particular title is if you look at the iron sights of this weapon there's a little bit of artifacting there but it's minor guys you can just not look at that or use something else like a bow and an arrow and you won't really see that <laughs> Now it's Forza Horizon 5 at 1440p, four times MSAA using the maximum settings. It's not even the extreme preset, it's actually maximum. And as you can clearly see, it is going to be an extremely good experience. Again, I I'm really sorry about that. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to the city part of the map because that's where it drops the most usually, especially getting out of the tunnel. Now in this festival area, it's usually pretty intensive as well, but it's not really really dropping too much, only into the 120s at times. 
that's very good. It's really, really smooth, guys, like this. All right, finally in the city. The car is all wrecked already. Look at that. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that was close. We're dropping down into the one teens again. Here we go. It is starting to drop. And now at the end of it, 103. And it drops from 100 to 98 frames per second. But who cares? It's only for a split second. And it's not like 98 is bad. Let's swing around in Spider-Man Remastered next time playing at 1440p using DLAA, no frame generation for now, and the very high settings, I manually set everything to the maximum right here, I enabled ray tracing on very high as well, and I disabled these two as well as these three settings down here, let's go! Alrighty, here we go, remember guys, this is native resolution with full-on ray tracing on very high and maximum settings basically, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> no need for DLSS with the 4070 Super to achieve 60 plus FPS, apparently. But all right, around here is where I saw the FPS dropping the most with ray tracing enabled, and uh, it is getting 80 still. This is really good. <laughs> all right. Usually there's a little smoke effect. Okay, there's a smoke effect right here. Yeah, uh, and that drops FPS even further into the 70s, as you can see. Let's just enable frame generation and see that magic at work. Here we go. I'm not even using DLSS. It's just on top of native resolution with DLAA. I'm going to apply that. And now, instead of getting like 70s and 80s, we're up into the 100s. So the smoothness is definitely going to be improved on a high refresh rate panel. But the thing is, the input lag, you can't actually notice it a little bit more in this game than in the previous games that we tested like cyberpunk for example still after a couple of minutes you're gonna be used to it completely now in terms of visual quality with frame generation in this particular title it's looking really good it's only when you swing around uh, these trees right here very very close to them that you're gonna see some imperfections some blurriness in the image but that's not really a problem in my opinion because you're swinging fast and not really paying too too much attention at the details. Also, finally, the VRAM utilization is still well under control here. Unfortunately, something like a 4060 Ti with 8 gigs would be stuttering all over the place, but 12 gigs is enough. Counter-Strike 2 is next. We're playing at 1440p, 60 hertz, because capture card. Yeah, that's a big shame, guys. <laughs> and I'm using the very high settings over here with no NTA listing. All right, so I could actually play this one on low settings and get like 600 frames per second with this CPU, but that would actually be... A little bit CPU bound <laughs> most of the time, I think. So that's why I'm choosing the high settings. A lot of people will actually play on low settings, including myself. But this can clearly handle it on very high, absolutely fine, as long as you keep the anti-aliasing disabled. All right, all right, all right. Let's see if I can win this one, and then I'll show you some smokes as well, because that's where the FPS are going to drop the most, but I can't really show it to you in the deathmatch server, of course. So yeah, just, just to get a little feel of the game. Oh, boy, I actually stuttered. My brain stuttered there, but <laughs> we did pretty well. You know what? Let's try a little bit of AWP action. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, okay, a couple of no-scopes there. All right, starting well. Uh, Hello, hello, hello to you too, boy, oh boy, hello, that's the other shotgun guy, and we got the other one as well, can we get one more kill? Yes, <laughs> and there we have it guys, first place is ours with 82 kills, amazing. Finally, this is a casual match now. I'm just going to see the smoke effects dropping down into like 199, <laughs> so 200 frames per second basically. Uh, fire effects dropping a little bit further into like the 180s and finally grenade inside of the smoke dropping it down into the 180s once again so it's always going to be a smooth high refresh rate experience but if you need 240 plus all of the time maybe drop down the settings a little bit
Okay, these GPUs are getting too powerful for the good old GTA 5. We're playing it at 2565, 1440 once again, four times MSAA, max settings right here aside from post effects, which introduces bloom and motion blur, which is ugly. I don't like it at least, so I kept that on normal. And all of these are turned on. These are the advanced graphics, which are very, very intensive. Now, I needed to lock this to 165 FPS using RivaTuner Statistics Server because sometimes it would would actually reach the engine limit of this game which is 188 fps and when it does that it starts stuttering like crazy now you could also increase the settings even further like the resolution scaling with frame scaling on the advanced graphics options or even use eight times msaa but then there is another little bit of an issue <laughs> <laughs> and that is, whenever you come across grass like this and a lot of bushes, it would actually drop way further than what we're seeing right now. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, Jack. Oh, <laughs> come on. I think we killed Jack. No. Oh, he was just chilling there. I had no control of the car, my friends. Oh, my goodness. But anyways, in the most intensive areas, you can expect drops into like the low 80s and uh, maybe even high 70s. Bobby's not here. Are you kidding me? We killed Jack and Bobby's not here. The one that we must kill every single time. At least we killed him already in, ah, in Cyberpunk. But hey, here it is. Here he is. Goodbye, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's been it for GTA 5. I know it's an older title at this point, but I still like to include it. It's very popular anyways, and it can be very demanding on maximum settings, as you could see. Next up, we got Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p with DLSS quality and 50% sharpness because this game is very, very soft at native resolution, so it actually ends up looking better if you use DLSS, interestingly. Ultra settings preset, as you can see, without ray tracing and no frame generation for now and as you can see here in one of the most cpu intensive areas in the game this is hogsmeade we are actually cpu bound with 70 to 90 percent gpu utilization most of the time i'm going to start counting the fps as well but the fps themselves are very high indeed always above 100 frames per second which is very very nice we are going to see the lowest fps around this area come on come on come on Please, what the heck? <laughs> uh, right here, it's usually where it drops the most, and it dropped to like 102, 98 right there at the minimum. So that's the most GPU intensive area that I've seen in this game. So yeah, you can expect like 98 minimums, which is very, very good. Unfortunately, the 1% lows are a bit lower. Well, they're at 69, that's very good. <laughs> It's perfect 1% lows, but that's because this game stutters a little bit because of the Unreal Engine. But now I want to turn on frame generation right here. That should smooth things out in terms of the stuttering issues, so it might be a good way to play this game. Let's go, here we are, that went smoothly, finally. <laughs> and over here it drops down into the 130. So we got like, what, a 35 or 36 FPS improvements uh, by using frame generation generation here. It works very well in this title since it's a single player game and always above 100 FPS I can't really feel any input lag differences honestly. And around here is where you're gonna see the biggest difference because when you're CPU bound and add frame generation on top it, it becomes way way smoother of an experience and so instead of getting like 100 FPS or 110 FPS we're now into the 170s in the Hogsmeade area. So all of a sudden Hogsmeade is not the most intensive area in the game because of frame generation. Nice. Next is Fortnite, aka Stutter Night. And oh, it's already dipping down into the 50s, guys. That's not a very good sign. We're at 1440p using DirectX 12 Epic Settings preset, which means that Nanite is enabled as well as Lumen. This is ray tracing, okay? So it's extremely intensive. That's why it's dropping, of course. All right, we just landed, guys. There's a guy over there. So let me just go this way. <laughs> it's, uh, it's getting a few little frame time spikes, which aren't really that noticeable but there will be bigger ones happening because when this game runs with ray tracing it tends to stutter quite a bit and I pre-installed the streamed assets or whatever it is like a 28 gigabyte uh, update that helps stability a lot come on oh my god okay oh there we go we got him Ooh, with low fps okay 
it's fine, it's fine. And there's another one. Okay, no, 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 it's just a bot. Well, let's go, let's go. <laughs> but yeah, I installed the streamed assets, which helps with stuttering, but it still does it uh, sometimes, every once in a while. Still, it's not really that great for Fortnite, for sure, with these FPS dropping into the 40s here inside of the bush. It is pretty rough. The good news is, if you enable the LSS on quality in this title, it looks just like native resolution, because it works very well with this art style. And now, instead of dropping into the 40s at the minimums, we're dropping into the 70s. So you can, after all, play this game absolutely fine with ray tracing on and uh, the lumen and so on. So, oh my god, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. Look at this, another bush right here, still not dipping from 70 frames per second. 1% lows are in the 50s, of course, because of the little fluctuations in the frame time graph. But hey, if you want to play Fortnite with all of the bells and whistles enabled, not at native resolution, but with basically native resolution visuals, 4070 Super is definitely capable of providing that, which is nice to see. Now, I know what a lot of Fortnite players are thinking at the moment. Nobody's gonna play with these settings. I know that. I will be making a separate video in Fortnite, testing more settings, like competitive ones as well. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, yeah, come on. Oh, so close. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just for testing purposes and to max out GPU, see what it can do. Now it's the GPU Melter Alan Wake 2 at 1440p native, okay, using the high settings preset. I just clicked high over there. It's still not maxed out, but we have ray tracing on high, and that means that we're using path tracing here, which is, of course, extremely intensive. As you can see, this is a very cinematic experience right here. <laughs> you could still add a little bit of motion blur and it's just like a movie but no don't don't do that of course <laughs> so you definitely need to utilize some dlss in this one let's see it on quality first Ooh, it bumps up things by like 20 fps that's actually quite impressive with path tracing guys i wasn't expecting a 20 fps boost from 24 to like 43 or something like that that's uh that's good okay it's now playable but it's not something that you'd want out of a gpu like this in my opinion and that's where frame generation comes in. Enabling that puts us at 70-ish FPS. There's a little bit of input lag. So it's actually very noticeable this time around, guys. <laughs> Just keep in mind that the input lag is around the same as it was before, at 40, 45 frames per second. So turning the mouse around is not really completely instant, unfortunately, but it works pretty well and I would actually choose this experience over the 40 FPS one. Want to check out the game of the year 2023 Baldur's Gate 3? Here we have it. This is running at the 1440p resolution using the ultra settings preset with DLAA instead of TAA. That's the only change that I did to the preset and it is running very well. Always above 100 FPS I guess here in the city which is one of the most intensive areas in the game you know if you use this view right here it's actually slightly more intensive than up here okay yeah 120s down into the one teens there's also dlss and frame generation support in this game but you don't need to use it whatsoever just play it at native res and have fun like this it's still gonna be buttery smooth of course uh, and this game is playable even with 30 fps you know like you could play with 30 or 40 fps just fine because this has turned based combat you know the enemies are just stopped, you can think about your next move and so on. Uh, and yeah, it's just a point and click as well, so you don't really need fast reactions. And around here, it's actually dropping quite a bit, look at that. 80s at times. Interesting. I'm not sure what's happening here, but okay. <laughs> it can also become CPU bound a little bit here in the city. I've seen the GPU usage fluctuating quite a bit down into like the 80% mark. There we go. Once again, 84%. So you will need a really beefy CPU to output 110 FPS on average, which is what we're getting right here. Uh, but yeah, again, 30 plus FPS is just fine in this game and it gets like 90 plus all of the time. Slow field action actually won the most innovative gameplay of the year. Like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Anyways, 
We're here for performance testing, not to roast the games, Crisp, okay? So we're playing this at 1440p resolution using the ultra settings preset. I just disabled motion blur. We're not using any frame generation or upscaling. And this game is super intensive using these settings, guys. We're getting like 60s around here. This is also the most intensive part of the game, or one of the most intensive cities, actually. There's one that's slightly more intensive than this. But yeah, we're getting around 60 to 70 frames per second, which is definitely playable around here but I have a feeling that it will drop from 60 FPS which is a bit of a shame yeah there we go 55 <laughs> An RTX 4070 Super can't really get 60 plus FPS all of the time at 1440p max settings in this game. <laughs> but honestly, I was expecting it a little bit because it's so broken. Slow field is slow field for a reason. It just runs slowly. <laughs> but now we have DLSS as well as frame generation support in this game. I'm gonna use DLAA because on quality you can actually spot some weirdness in the image, some noise effects. So I'm gonna use DLAA over here and set it to frame generation right here. And this delivers really good visual quality still. A little bit of artifacting going on around the laser thingy, you know? I can see some weirdness there, some blockiness. Over here we saw it drop into like the 50s, mid 50s, and now we're in the lower 80s, mid 80s as well. Look at that. It's not dropping from 80 FPS, so my predictions were on point. 80 plus all of the time is what you get with these uh, settings right here. And again, in terms of visual quality, it looks very, very similar to native resolution. Apex Legends is up next. We're playing at 1440p resolution using maximum settings aside from this one right here, which introduces a little bit of stuttering if you set it to the maximum. All right, guys, here we have it. Uh, <laughs> people are already there. I just dropped <laughs> and we're getting 200 plus. FPS. That's pretty good. Not good enough to max out like a 240 Hz monitor, unfortunately, but it's definitely a high refresh rate experience, guys. Oh my gosh, oh, they're everywhere. Let's see the FPS inside of the smokes as well. Not a problem. Still only dropping into like the 160s. Oh, there's one here. There, he didn't see us, guys. He didn't see us. Okay. Maybe he has a friend, so we probably shouldn't really be doing this. Yep, definitely. God! Oh, I'm screwed! Yep, terrible idea. Well, I'm just gonna go into the firing range right here because we can throw an ultimate and see, like, worst case scenario there. I'm also gonna throw a smoke or a couple of them. There we go, dropping into the 140s now. And let's see some explosions. There we go. 130s is the minimum that you'll see in worst case scenario. <laughs> so it's safe to say it's gonna be super smooth the entire time here. And lastly, before we go to the conclusion and I show you a couple of more benchmarks there, I got The Last of Us Part 1 at 1440p native with DLAA and the ultra settings. I actually set it to ultra right here and it switched to auto, which I guess is ultra <laughs> for this GPU. So here we are in one of the most intensive parts of the game. I played the entire thing through while benchmarking as well. So I know that the FPS will drop slightly more in a, a snowy scene a little bit later on into the game, but it's only slightly, like three or four less FPS. But this part is way more beautiful anyways, and it has way more complex uh, things happening. Well nothing is happening but the, the scenery is great and beautiful so there's that let's go inside of here so far it hasn't dropped from 60 fps which is great the normal 4070 actually dipped below 60 fps in this area like right around this door right here yep so uh, this one is only dropping into like the the 60s mid 60s that's what we get here so a decent improvement i doubt this will drop from 60 fps anyway inside of this game but yeah if you remember this game was extremely intensive super hard to run when it came out it still is although it has been patched a lot of course but with a 4070 super there's nothing to worry about obviously given that this has 3090 performance basically you shouldn't really expect bad things coming from it at 1440p and it's conclusion time guys i'll still have a couple of more games running right here in their benchmark runs it's assassin's creed mirage as well as rainbow six siege both of them ran absolutely fantastic on the 4070 super as did pretty much all of the games that we tested here today this little thing definitely packs quite a punch doesn't it 
That's what she said. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, but seriously, look at this form factor right here. It's so small, so tiny. Also, I didn't talk about this, but I really like the design of the Founders Edition on this 4070 Super. The old black look basically looks absolutely sick in my opinion. Anyways, should you buy a 4070 Super for its MSRP of $599? I think it's a pretty good option for that price, guys. Of course, in some countries, the prices will be way higher than that, unfortunately. But for MSRP, I really think this is a great GPU. I think this is much more worthy of the $600 price tag than the 4070 was. Um, of course, that's discounted now 50 bucks, but this is still more worth it than that for like 15% more performance or whatever. Yeah, uh, it's a great GPU. It doesn't consume that much in most of the games. It didn't even consume the 220 watts TGP, so that's a plus. It just sucks a little bit to see it come out in 2024. Anyways, overall, I think it's a really nice GPU. I would have liked to see like uh, 16 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 12, but I guess 12 will do for the foreseeable future. In some games, we already saw the VRAM utilization going up to like 11.5 gigabytes and so on, 10 plus definitely, especially with frame generation enabled. But for now, that's not an issue whatsoever, in my opinion, at least especially for 1440p gaming. We'll have to find out about 4K in tomorrow's video, so stay tuned in. And as always, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Love you all. Bye-bye.